Hi everyone, my name is Becky Carlin and I will be your moderator for today's webinar. I have just a couple of housekeeping items to cover before we get started. First, we'll be recording today's webinar and it will be available beginning tomorrow morning on LiveWell Colorado's website. To visit the recording, simply visit livewellcolorado.org, visit the toolbox and select webinars in the toolbox menu. And second, we're going to have some time for some Q&A at the end of today's webinar. If possible, please let us know who your question is directed to when you ask it. And to ask a question, simply type it into the questions tab on your on-screen control panel. And now I am going to turn things over to Lynn Kathleen. Thank you, Becky. And welcome, everyone, to our webinar on Colorado School Proud Colorado Proud School Meal Day. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> it's actually our second time we're doing it. So it's a repeat from last year with a new lineup and some new information. And we're really excited to share this and, uh, and so excited to have you joining and listening in and hoping that you will also become a school that participates this year. To begin with our webinar, we have a number of presenters, and the first things that we're going to do is to learn how and why Colorado Proud um, sponsors School Meal Day, and then we're also going to learn about the resources that are available to the school to help support that exciting day, and there are many, many of them. And then we're going to hear from some schools, and we'll learn about the benefits to schools from those who have done it in the past. And we're also going to learn how chefs support this effort. It's very exciting because part of the resources available to schools is to bring a chef in and, um, and the wonderful things they can do to excite the children in eating local fresh produce. And then we're also going to learn about the benefits to producers. Today, our lineup of speakers is going to be first me. I'm going to give you a little bit of background about the Colorado Farm to School project. And then we're going to turn it over to Wendy White to talk about the Colorado Proud uh, School Meal Day. And she's with the Department of Agriculture. Next will be Erica Edwards with the Cherry Creek School District. And then Jason Morse with the Douglas County School District. And finally, to wrap it up, will be Brett Ken Karn with Circle Fresh Farms. The next slide just gives you a, our pictures. I always think it's nice for you to be able to put a face with a, a, a name and a voice. And so you can always come back to this if you want to make that connection over and over again. To start with, the Colorado Farm to School project is actually um, a project that has been going on for about three years now. And our purpose is to put out resources for both schools and for producers to help them ramp up their farm to school efforts. The different types of things you'll find on our website include a farm to school primer, which really is, you know, if you want to know what farm to school looks like in Colorado and what its potential is and what is farm to school anyway, you will find it in this primer. It's a great resource to have. We also have an overview of school food procurement in Colorado, a really important document for school food service directors. And then we have a how-to resources, which really are just a wonderful set of links that will get you to all different types of things, answer your questions, provide you with resources through this straightforward linking document. We also have some direction on how you can find and know your farmer. And also, we have a bunch of case studies. In fact, we're rolling out some new ones. And those are so exciting to read because they're what is happening here in Colorado. And I really encourage you to check those out. We also have some farm to school curriculum. If you're looking to figure out how can you integrate this into your classroom or your school gardens. And then finally, we've got a farm to school, what we call choose your own farm to school adventure, which is really for school food service directors to do a self-assessment to figure out where they're at and where they want to go when it comes to farm to school. Additional resources that we have for producers include links as well as a webinar on how to use Colorado Market Maker, and you'll hear a bit more about that from Wendy today. We also have links to the Colorado Farm to Market site, which is a great source of resources on how you sell directly to direct markets, and schools are one of those direct markets. 
And then finally, some guidance from the Crop Extension and Food Distribution and Food Safety. And there are a bunch of different things that you will find helpful as you figure out how best to meet the safety needs and the procurement needs for the schools. We are always looking to hear who is doing great things out there. And so we have a Nominate Your Farm to School champion. All you have to do is just go right in there onto that survey link, and please do nominate someone. Everybody is a winner, by the way. So you don't need to have a lot of people voting. We just want to know who those people are, and then we will follow up and do an interview with them. And then their story will be linked on our Colorado Farm to School website. Also, we'd like to know who are, who's out there among the producers that is selling or wants to sell to schools. Please take our survey. It's very short. Um, but it gives us some information and the ability to help you link to schools. And then finally, we have um, a community outreach. If you are in a community that would like to have more technical assistance or more information come to an existing meeting, please tell us who you are, and we will try to set that up for you. The staff on this project are myself, and I'm with the Spark Policy Institute, Wendy peters Muschetti. She's the school liaison, and then Jim Dyer, who is the producer liaison. We have one more in our series that's set up um, as a topic, and that is going to be in September, where we'll talk about the Farm to School Equipment Grant Template. But by the way, this doesn't mean we don't have more in the hopper. We do believe we will be setting more up. We just haven't identified them yet. If you would like more information, please go to our coloradofarmtoschool.org website or the coloradoagriculture.com site, which will also take you to the statewide legislatively mandated Colorado Farm to School Task Force, where you'll find other resources of interest to you. Now, to get started on our presentations, our first one is going to be by Wendy White, who is with the Colorado Department of Agriculture. She's a domestic marketing specialist at that department. And her primary responsibility has been managing the Colorado Proud program, which encourages consumers, restaurants, schools, and retailers to purchase Colorado food and agricultural products. She organizes the public relations and promotion efforts for the markets division, in addition to developing the brochures and publications. And I might mention that Wendy is also a member of the Colorado Farm to School Task Force, and it is a great pleasure to always work with her. Wendy, welcome. Well, thanks, Lynn. I appreciate it. And thank you, everyone, for uh, logging in to the webinar today. I really appreciate your interest in Colorado Proud School Meal Day, and we hope we can get you involved. Uh, just a little history about the, the event. It is a partnership between the Colorado Department of Agriculture and the Colorado Department of Education. So I'd really like to thank our partners at uh, CDE for being such uh, great folks to work with in putting this all together. And we have been doing this for nine years. So this is our ninth anniversary in hosting Colorado Proud School Meal Day. And the idea really is to encourage schools to incorporate more local ingredients on their menus and teach kids about Colorado agriculture and healthy eating. So the first thing I'd like to sort of talk about is uh, buy local trends and why this whole concept is important to our Colorado consumers. So we've done a lot of research, and uh, every five years we conduct a public attitudes about Colorado agriculture survey with CSU, and 90% of Colorado consumers would buy more Colorado grown and produced products if they were available and identified as being from Colorado. So we really know we have the, the support of our, our residents in purchasing Colorado products if they're given those products as a choice, and that's where Colorado Proud comes into play in terms of identifying them. For our Colorado Proud program, we do survey work every year, too, to identify whether or not people are purchasing local products. And as of last year, 84% indicated that they purchased at least some Colorado products. 57% uh, are looking for the Colorado Proud logo more now than they used to. And this is where I get really excited, is that 76% are very or somewhat familiar with the Colorado Proud logo. And that's up from 68% in 2010 and 59% in 2008. So we're really making great strides in promoting the Colorado Proud logo to consumers, to schools, to restaurants, to retailers. And uh, we really feel we're making a difference in um, supporting our local agriculture industry and, and hopefully uh, increasing the sales of local products. A little bit about Colorado Proud. It was established in 1999. And it is a free marketing program, again, that helps promote food and agricultural products that are grown, raised, or processed in Colorado. And uh, we really 
tried to grow the program as much as possible. Go ahead, Becky. And we're really excited in that we have uh, more than 1,700 members in the program. So this includes the farmers, ranchers, uh, restaurants, retailers, uh, food and ag associations, and just now recently schools have started to sign up as well. So we're really excited to have them as, as partners on board too. A little bit of information, uh, just about 2010, Colorado Proud School Meal Day, just a few numbers to share with you. I didn't have really good data for 2011, so I went back to 2010. But that year we had more than 200 schools participate. Uh, we reached nearly 60,000 students, and we uh, hosted more than 40 chef demos and producer presentations at schools across Colorado. So that was one of our, our biggest years in, in promoting Colorado Proud School Meal Day and getting people really out in the field and sharing this information. For 2012, uh, each year Governor Hickenlooper does make a proclamation, and this year is for September 12, 2012, and uh, that is Colorado Proud School Meal Day. We have information on our website at coloradoproud.org. We have uh, the proclamation is there, an order form for materials. We have a lot of free uh, point of purchase materials, uh, proudly serving Colorado cuisine window decals. Uh, other signage, uh, we can send you the logo, and a lot of our agricultural organization partners such as the Colorado Foundation for Agriculture, the Colorado Beef Council, Western Dairy Association, Colorado Farm Bureau, uh, and the Colorado Egg Producers all uh, are providing free materials as well, and those items are listed on the order form there. Uh, but everything is free, and uh, there are a lot of helpful resources like agricultural posters, the Ag, Colorado Ag Reader through the Colorado Foundation for Agriculture, which is a, an activity newspaper uh, for primarily elementary age school children. Uh, but we do have a lot of great resources, again, all available free of charge. So I encourage you to go to the website, look at the order form, and um, place your order uh, request for materials. I'm hoping to get everything shipped out by the end of August so you're, you have everything you need for September 12th. On that order form, too, you can also request a chef demo or farmer presentation. We work closely with the Colorado Chefs Association. Uh, Jason Morris is part of that organization in, in getting chefs out to schools to do these great demos. And they're all always very popular um, with the kids. So why is uh, Colorado Proud School Meal Day important and this effort to, to get into local schools with the agriculture message? We really do want to connect kids with agriculture. Uh, so many families are, are generations removed from being on a family farm and we really want to educate the kids about what Colorado has to offer and what we produce as a state and um, get them connected with our agriculture industry. We also want to teach them where their food comes from so they know where, where milk and meat products and veggies all come from. I think it's important to tie them to that. We also want to support our local producers and the economy. That's one of the bases for Colorado Proud is uh, better for you, better for Colorado, and that buying locally is supporting our state's farmers and ranchers and the overall economy. We also want to connect schools with their local communities, too. So the next couple slides just show a couple of uh, or several images from past events and what schools have done. You'll see some pictures of chefs doing the demos in the cafeterias. Usually the chef demos are done over the uh, lunch break in the cafeteria, and they're really great at just uh, you know, continually doing the demos as the kids are coming through and different, uh, different groups are coming through. A picture of a salad bar with uh, Colorado Proud materials, uh, posters and, and billboards and things welcoming the chef demos. So the schools do a variety of, of things, and it really is up to you to determine what works best for, for your school, and we're happy to, to accommodate your needs and, and help you in any way we can. I wanted to review some of the resources that we have available to help you in this process. Uh, the first item is the Colorado Farm Fresh Directory. Uh, this annual publication that we produce lists all the farmers' markets across the state, as well as farms and ranches that sell direct to the public. Uh, there's a crop calendar, a list of ag and uh, food festivals, and other resources. So it really is a helpful guide to, to help you locate uh, producers. The next item is Colorado Market Maker, which Lynn did, did mention before. And this is our online resource for finding local products. So we really want this to be the one-stop shop for anybody looking to, to find local products. You can search within uh, a certain radius of the zip code. Uh, you can search by product, uh, company name. So it's really a helpful tool to help you connect with local producers. And this is just a snapshot of what Market Maker looks like when you, um, when you first visit it. But the next slide I really wanted to point out, um, Adams School District 50 has done a really nice job. And this is 
again, one of the areas that pools can now participate in Colorado Market Maker and create their own profile. So when producers are coming to Market Maker, they can find the schools that are buying locally. And um, as I mentioned, Adam has done a really nice job of developing their profile, uh, that they are a school, um, what meals they serve, the uh, preferences that they have when buying, they're buying locally, their certifications, everything that they're, they're looking for for a producer. And one thing that I'm really excited that they've, they've taken advantage of, too, is the business connections uh, area on the right, lower right-hand side there, and that they're linking back to the producers that they work with. So then the, uh, anybody coming to their, their profile page here can click on those producers, too, and find out more about them. So they've done a really good job of putting that information together, and we really hope schools take advantage of Colorado Market Maker and uh, develop their own profiles for the site. Uh, one of the other resources is the COFarmToMarket.com website that Lynn also mentioned, and this is a, been a this was a partnership between the Department of Agriculture of Colorado State University as well as uh, the Department of Public Health and Environment and the Colorado Farmers Market Association. It really tried to create a website that uh, helps producers and schools navigate the rules and regulations made when it comes to direct uh, marketing of Colorado food and agricultural products. So there is a special area and additional resources or additional information for the school. But uh, we hope that's a good resource for you. And with that, I'll just, uh, my contact information is here as well as our various websites. Uh, if you visit coloradoagriculture.com, we do have a link to the Colorado Farm to School Task Force where we have uh, meeting information and additional resources. So feel free to visit that website uh, for more information about Colorado Proud School Meal Day, as well as the task force. Thank you very much, Wendy. I have to tell you, I, this is one of my very favorite days of, uh, well, of the year, but certainly of September. And for those of you who have put on a uh, school meal day with Colorado Proud, there are so many exciting things that are happening. It is so well coordinated, and the resources make it really an event. The kids are excited about it. Um, they sometimes even have farmers that are there and the chefs are there. It's just really an exciting um, day to have. And one of the other things that I think is just so, you know, so promising for our state is that the Colorado Proud label is really the, you know, it's just everywhere. You go into your King Supers or your Safeway and it's right there and people really do want to buy Colorado products. So um, local is a really important new direct market and one that we are all excited to have coming to the school as well as to our neighborhood. So thank you very much, Wendy. Um, the next speaker is Erica Edwards, and she's with the Cherry Creek School District. Erica is the wellness supervisor within the Food and Nutrition Services Department. She's a member of the district's wellness committees. She coordinates the classroom nutrition education program, and she assists with grant projects focusing on wellness as well as projects to promote the school meal program and healthy eating habits within the district. This district is a very fortunate to have a wellness supervisor, and we're very lucky to have Erica join us today. Thank you, Erica, for coming on. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm glad to be here, and I think part of the reason that I was asked to come on here is because we've really <laughs> taken full advantage of um, the coordination of the Colorado Proud School Meal Day and all of Wendy's work um, organizing the chef demonstrations. So we have um, participated in School Meal Day um, at least back to 2008. And honestly, this, um, our participation definitely precedes me being in the district. I've been here about two years at this point. Um, so we've, had, we've really done a lot of the chef demonstrations. Um, the, the number of schools has really ranged um, up to about 10 we had last year who had chefs come in. So thank you for um, coordinating that because our schools really, really have enjoyed it. Um, so generally about you know, five to 10 schools will have chef demonstrations. And we really do that based on um, the kitchen manager requesting. So I send out kind of a... Um, an announcement and the kitchen managers kind of request if they would like one. We try to um, have different 
schools take advantage of the chef demonstrations um, different years. So, um, and then we generally have a menu that day that um, is meant to highlight Colorado food um, more than maybe even other days do. Um, and then we have a fruit and vegetable of the month program that is very, very similar to the harvest of the month, but um, we just have our own little version of it. Um, so we try to incorporate that into the day as well. So the menu kind of reflects that. Um, we have generally gotten the word out through school newsletters, through our website, through um, CTCOs, hopefully. And honestly, um, the more communication that you get out about the day, the better I've learned. So um, the more excitement there is and the more maybe parents get involved, which is really nice at some of the schools. But either way, um, students really have started to kind of recognize that Colorado Proud uh, symbol. And so um, there's a few pictures on this slide of just some of our um, promotional materials and also some of the chefs and what their demonstrations have been. Um, we generally leave the, um, the demonstration up to the chef so they can kind of do whatever they want. Most have fantastic ideas of what they'd like to do. So we've had demonstrations that have included horse peach cobblers, salsas, smoothies, um, even some decorative fruit and vegetable cutting. And I think Jason is actually probably in some of these pictures from previous years. So um, all promoting the local produce. And then we've also taken advantage of the resources from the Department of Agriculture. So we try to, at each demonstration, or I did last year, try to have some of those materials so that kids can then take those materials home to their parents um, and make that connection from the school also to home and to the grocery store. So again, we have some um, more pictures of our demonstrations. Um, I see this coming into our program schools very, very easily. And honestly, I'm at a point where I want it to um, be incorporated even more. But it's a perfect opportunity to partner with your chefs through the school volunteers. If you have any in your district, and I know uh, Jason will talk probably more about that later in the presentation as well. Um, if you have a program that highlights produce and local produce, um, put that into the Colorado Proud School Meal Day, just like um, any other uh, month. And also, since it is in September, I think we you can use it very, very well to kick off or introduce your efforts to highlight local food in your operation overall. So I know many school districts have a monthly feature of a Colorado Proud menu. Um, many are getting even more into the Farm to School program. So if you want to use this as a way to kind of kick off those efforts, and me included, I, um, I'm so excited to hear about more and more resources for Farm to School and for um, procurement of local food. So I need to get um, us going even more as well. So that's how we have participated. Um, these are just a few pictures as the next three slides are simply just pictures of the different demonstrations. 2009 and 2010, I didn't have any pictures, so we go straight to 2011. And then we will participate again this year, hopefully. Thank you, Erica. And those are just fantastic pictures. I, I love seeing the kids all looking at this great, yummy food and, and being so excited about it. And thank you for pointing out how school districts often can kind of launch, get their, get their toes wet in the whole farm to school movement um, by starting out with the Colorado Proud School Meal Day. And that really is the way that we have seen a number of schools do it. And then they maybe you know, move to the next one, which is featuring a Colorado um, vegetable uh, once a month. And so, and so that's how farm to school gets going. It's 
it's little steps, and before you know it, you're doing a lot of it. So thank you very much, Erica. Our next speaker is Jason Morse. And Jason is a chef. He is with the American Culinary Federation, and he's a certified executive chef. He is also working with the Douglas County School District as their executive chef. He works with an amazing team, he tells me, with the Nutrition Services Department in Douglas County, and that that team has been working hard to affect change on what is served to the children and to have an impact on healthy food choices. Chef Jason can be found doing lunchroom chef events, working with the district on their Channel 54 media segments, and mentoring the Thunder Ridge High School Pro Start team. Chef Jason participates on many panels and advisory boards for agriculture and manufacturing, and he is proud to be part of the Chef's Move to Schools initiative and works hard to help positively affect the nutritional lives of our children. So thank you so much, Jason, for joining us today. Thank you very much. You know, um, back in 2007, I think, when I first got involved in doing the school lunch, the Colorado Proud School Lunch Day, was with Cherry Creek Schools, and that really was what I think set into, into motion my desire to move into the school lunch segment. Um, very, very proud of what our district has to offer and what we've done to affect change. Two years ago and, and even last year, we chose a couple schools to participate in the program. This year, we thought we would take it global and do it in all 74 of our schools. So on September 12th, we will be promoting the menu that you see there to 62,000 students um, in hopes that you know our participation for the day will land somewhere around 40,000 meals served. We're very excited that you know the growing time is perfect for us, the, the season is great, the, the corn is wonderful, the potatoes from the valley are excellent, uh, and we will really be able to put on a wonderful menu for all of our kids. Again, helping them understand that you know beef doesn't come from the grocery store, where it comes from, and, and learning that you know, Petraco family grows absolutely wonderful lettuce and onions um, from up in uh, Fort Collins. It's just a great way for us to really work with our students and help educate them because agriculture is so strong in Colorado. I think it's important for us to take that stand and, and help our students understand that. And Douglas County has a, a very strong participation in, in 4-H and the Douglas County Fair, the uh, Douglas County Fair is firing up this week, and I know, you know, 4-H has, has got a huge presence there as well. So just excited to be able to offer that to our students. Um, you're correct. If you could switch to the next slide. You are very correct. We have a wonderful staff. Um, I'm, I'm truly honored to work with a great group, group of individuals in our department. Um, from the top down, everyone is committed to this change. And while it has been, you know, a painful process, maybe moving from where we were to where we're at, it's been nice because everyone's starting to see the results and they're starting to see the students get excited about what we do, which at the end of the day, the more meals we serve to students and not throw in the garbage is a huge success for us. So uh, the pictures you're looking at in the top left, that is one of our uh, pizzas that we developed. We developed a, a Pro Start students and I and our team worked together to develop some artisan pizzas. We're doing some food shots now where we're really focusing on food photography to show our students that there is life beyond the blue tray. There is life beyond the silver tray, and this is the food that we serve. So top shot is of our one of our signature pizzas that we have. The shot in the middle there is one of our harvest bars, and we have three different levels of the harvest bar. Um, they can do a bronze, a silver, or a gold level, depending on the participation and desire of that school site. But really another good way for the managers to work with the students and, and kind of coach them saying we're going to start bronze and we're going to move to silver, or we're going to go to for the top and move to gold. Uh, a great way to incorporate our wonderful produce when it's in season into our harvest bars. Bottom left picture is of a program we do called the Nutrition Break where it's another way for us to get into the classroom and get the kids eating our food and understanding the fresh fruits and vegetables and being a problem or being um, you know, a, an advocate for health and healthy choices and really letting our students know that healthy food has really good taste to it. It's not all cardboard and uh, no taste. So we'll move to the next slide. Uh, here's just a, uh, the top left is just a stock photo uh, I took. I, I, I'm very involved in ag. I, I, I truly 
enjoy ag. It's, it's a good part of my heart and, and what I do in Colorado. That's a farm that I was fortunate to go to in Wisconsin. I just I like the picture, so it reminds me of happy times. The, uh, the other two photos you see are one of our school's gardens. We have a lot of gardens in our schools. I believe we have about 22 gardens that are growing currently. Um, and the, the school sites have really taken these on as outdoor learning environments, as a way to show our students you know, what can be grown here and how the wonderful warm days and the nice cool nights really can affect their jalapenos or can affect their corn or can affect their sunflowers. So our, our teachers have embraced it, the school sites have embraced it, the principals have embraced it and really taken it steps further than I think we even imagined to say, you know, instead of one planter box, how can we do 10? We have a school site that has 18 planter boxes set up ready to, to grow some wonderful Colorado produce that when we do our lunchroom experiences and we get in there, we're doing our own sorts of harvest events where they're harvesting some of the fruit and or vegetables out of their gardens and we're going in there to the school again to work with them and talk about produce, which, which all ties back into the whole Colorado school lunch day is where we're able to go out there and say, you know, these are the wonderful things grown in there. We have picked a, one of our schools, our middle schools, that we're doing a big event for on the 12th working with them to really impact 1,150 students to help them understand how important it is to support local agriculture. Uh, next slide. And here's some more shots of some other schools as well. And you can see they've done some native grasses. They've done different methods of organizing the gardens. They've got trellises in there. And it's just, it's awesome to see and to be a part of that. And then to take it full circle and go into the classroom and work with the students, but then have the students take these outdoor learning environments and really get excited and passionate about what they're growing and what they're eating. I think it's, it's crucial to the future of our students to help them understand that, you know, chicken doesn't just come from King Supers, it comes from a chicken. And, and what the chicken growers and producers do and what dairy farms do and what the cattle industry does and what ag does to bring their meals to them. It's just a good way for us to help our students again understand you know it takes a lot to put a gallon of milk on the table and it's not just you know understand that they can go into the store and open the door and grab a gallon of milk and poof they're done it really takes our uh, ag folks a lot of time and love and talent to get that to them in, in a fun and exciting and fast safe way um, next slide do we have one more there we go um, I'm also on the board of directors for the Colorado Chefs Association was very fortunate to be invited to the White House to participate in the Let's Move to Schools program. An excellent opportunity to get chefs involved in the schools working with the students and I don't know that we expected the change and expected what was going to happen. I think in Douglas County we were fortunate to all come together and, and we mesh very very well in a, a group of individuals that came together with the same common goals and I think we thought we were going to get X and maybe we got X plus Y and Z and Z plus and, and a lot of extra things that were really fun and exciting that we've learned and the, the process takes time. It's not going to happen overnight but it takes commitment and time and the willingness of you know the administration from the superintendent down to nutrition services down to our kitchen managers. We have a wonderful, wonderful group of managers that are dedicated to this change and, and it takes time and it takes baby steps and it takes sometimes maybe taking a step back and redirecting to get it different way but um, the Chefs Move to Schools has been an excellent program. Uh, I've been on the board for the Colorado Chefs Association for many years, I believe about 10 or 11 years, uh, a past president of it. Um, the, the Chefs Association is absolutely the premier association and organization for getting professional chefs to be involved and be in contact with your students. Um, wonderful resource, Carrie Jensen and Joan uh, Brewster that are in our office are great resources to tap into um, and, and really get in touch with them and, and let them know your needs and they'll work hard to get chefs in your schools. Um, other than that, I don't really have much. The, uh, I know the Fuel Up to Play is there. Western Dairy is, a, is so supportive of all things that we do. Uh, and again, you know, I, I, dairy is kind of near and dear to my heart. I had a pretty cool dairy experience lately, recently that uh, has left me wanting more, so to speak. So um, wonderful resources for you. I, I urge you to really reach out to them and let them know exactly what you're looking for and the scope of the job that you're trying to accomplish. 
because there are a lot of chefs that are catching wind of this and, and taking notice of it and learning that you know school nutrition is is a really cool environment to get chefs into uh, it takes a little bit of learning and we're available as a resource too because you know we we had growing pains I had growing pains it took me a while to learn some of the systems but you know if we can be a resource as well we're, we're more than happy to do that so thank you for allowing me to present I uh, if you guys need anything we're there for you thank you Jason that was that was really exciting to hear about how the chefs are you know becoming so integrated into the schools and and I mean that's the thing is that when you start to work with fresh food again instead of processed food, it, it allows for chefs and chefs and school personnel, cafeteria personnel to become the cooks that they want to become mm -hmm. and to get that training to get back online and, and really make the fresh food for the kids. And the kids love that food too. So thank you so much for being part of this important change that's happening in our schools. You're welcome. Our last speaker today is Brett Kenkarn and Brett is with um, Circle Fresh Farms. He has spent the last 25 years working in the natural resource-based community development initiatives, both in the rural as well as native and inner city communities, assisting startup enterprises and social venture development. Most recently, he is the founding CEO for Veterans Green Jobs, which is a national nonprofit working with returning military veterans transitioning into green jobs in a variety of different sectors. And in that, part of that, he works with Circle Fresh Farms and the veterans in that program. Thank you so much, Brett. I know this is a busy time of the year, and I can't tell you how much we appreciate having a, an amazing producer uh, uh, available to us to talk to us about what you're doing. Well, I, I'm delighted and frankly honored to be a part of this presentation and this conversation. I I was so uh, in awe, frankly, in uh, January when I attended my first uh, farm to school conference and realized what remarkable work the people in this uh, area have been doing to build this really critical relationship both between food producers and, and our schools and institutions, but also, of course, the link for, for children to see where their food literally comes from. So I'm delighted to be here, and I'm just going to try to briefly give you a, an overview of what we do here at Circle Fresh Farms. We are um, primarily, Circle Fresh Farms is primarily a, 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 essentially a produce brand that specializes in local, clean, uh, fresh, organic produce that's distinguished by the fact that we grow it in greenhouses hydroponically and therefore can grow essentially year-round. Um, we were established in part to create a network or a, a conduit essentially for um, a network of um, smaller family-sized uh, uh, greenhouse growers it's because as many of you know it's, it's, it's quite difficult if you're both spending all of your time growing something or producing something to then also be out there hustling the market side. So we're kind of the market side for that whole initiative. Uh, next slide, please. Do I, can I actually forward these or do I rely on someone else? Hi, this is Becky. I'm actually forwarding them for you, but if okay. you can the slide, I'll go along. That's fine. I, I'm new to this, so forgive me. So just to give you a sense of the scale of things in terms of produce in the United States, it's also interesting to note, by the way, just an interesting kind of a sidebar, that produce is actually not considered an agricultural product as far as the USDA is concerned. It's a specialty product. Um, agricultural products are things like wheat and corn and barley and soybeans or even potatoes. So sometimes we feel like we've been getting a little bit of the sort of second cousin effect here. But produce is obviously extremely important to all of us, and it's a growing market segment. It's an $80 billion market segment, in fact, in the U.S., $2.4 billion in Colorado. Front range alone is $1.7 billion just in produce. If you put that in the perspective of organic, which is growing quite rapidly now, organic is almost 11% of produce sold. Um, that's over almost $11 billion nationally. Uh, 20, 264 million dollars in Colorado and, all, and probably over 200 million dollars of that in the front range. Um, just an interesting little side note also around where people are getting their organic food. 
54% of it, uh, people are getting it from mainstream supermarkets with 39%, which you might normally think, well, most of that's being sold at Whole Foods. Not actually, although about 40% is. And then 7% other channels, probably things like farmer's markets. Next, please. So just to put this in perspective of Denver, um, Denver residents buy $6 billion worth of food, 90% uh, of which is grown from outside the area. So $5.4 billion of our local economy leaves and goes somewhere else. Now it's interesting to note that, that the metro Denver area has 10% of Colorado's farms, but they only sell about $5 million of food directly to consumers, which means that um, only about 2.6% of that food is coming from metro farm sales, and uh, it's very small compared to what it could be. Next, please. Again, as I mentioned, we're a kind of central, um, essentially, market hub, although we also provide technical assistance and support to our farmers who are in this kind of uh, set of spokes outside of the hub here in, in, the, in the Denver area. In fact, our big facility is here in the Wheat Ridge area where we have about two acres um, under production. There's about three and a half, almost four acres total that ranges in size from a 3,000 square foot greenhouse up in uh, the uh, Brighton area to um, almost another acre of greenhouse by another grower in that area, and then another, say, quarter acre of greenhouses that we're putting in the Pueblo area. So then what we do is aggregate that and then do our negotiations with the various retailers. Right now our primary customer is Whole Foods, and if you go out to Whole Foods around uh, almost anywhere in, uh, in the front range from Pueblo or Colorado Springs North, you'll find uh, Circle Fresh produce, often jointly branded with our companion farms. So that could be Boulder Fresh from Longmont, Yarrow Farms from Boulder, or Nicholas Farms from Pueblo. Next, please. Um, well, part of what differentiates us is that we're one of the few that actually uh, are attempting organic hydroponic greenhouse growing. There are lots of hydroponic greenhouses. In fact, a lot of the tomatoes that you might buy in the off-season are from uh, greenhouse operations grown often in Canada or in Mexico, but we're one of the few that's actually uh, certified organic. and We maintain that certification for all of the farmers in our network. We're also building a very exciting food tracing and safety program where, based on the QR codes that you've probably seen, when you walk into that market, you will be able to scan the QR code associated with our products and literally see what farm it came from and probably what, what, what day it was harvested plus just more information about that farm and maybe even some fun things like recipes and so on. Next, please. The distinct, distinguishing features for us, again, on the market side are this fact that we're local, um, uh, that we are organic, that we are very high quality. I don't know if any of you have tasted our, our tomatoes, for example, but people tend, tend to develop quite a loyalty to them once they have. Um, I'll talk a little bit about our innovation and also our, our, some of our uh, sort of social investments as well. Next, please. So this is some of our products. Um, as you can see, sometimes we, we will harvest both green tomatoes as well as um, you know, ripe tomatoes because people, sometimes people want to use them that way. The top slide's not so clear, but that's actually cucumbers. We have um, a, a mini cucumbers that we have for sale. Some of those are coming online actually this very week again. And then we also sell a series of specialty tomatoes, both heirlooms and some unique varieties like zebra tomatoes. We have a new black opal tomato that's just come out on the market for the first time ever. It's supposed to be very high in, in liptazine and other of these uh, antioxidants. And then the, we'll come back to this photo down towards the bottom, the, the cases of red tomatoes, but I wanted to just note how kind of beautiful they are and then we'll, we'll return to, to their potential use in the school context. Next, please. So some, just a few pictures from the production side. Up in the upper right are some uh, Asian greens. We can grow all kinds of different greens, not just lettuce. We can grow probably um, you know, 15 or 20 different types of lettuce itself. And we actually sell that lettuce as live lettuce. So you can literally buy it with the root wad still attached. You could take it home, put it in a bowl of water, and it could sit quite happily on the counter or in the, in the, in the refrigerator for weeks because it's actually still a living plant. Um, I should note that the gentleman that's standing there is named Evan Premer. Evan's a, a returned military uh, veteran. He served two terms in Iraq. Um, we have now six veterans, or five veterans working in our system, and we are part of a Veteran to Farmer initiative, really working hard to create opportunities for veterans as a part of our business. Next, please. 
Um, just pointing out a few more of these features. We are uh, certified by CCOF, Certified California Organic Farmers. We are, as I said, moving towards a, a very comprehensive track and trace system that will enable, if there happened to be any recall, you could immediately identify right where that uh, produce that came from us was actually grown and harvested. Next, please. So just to talk a little bit about some of the marketing innovations, we, as I said, create, we grow a living lettuce. And so we now have a, a couple of different ways that you can purchase that in the stores where it's actually still very much alive. In fact, it's, it's being watered, literally, while it's in the store. On the right-hand side are, are what, what are called wet rack trays, where those root wads are just set into those trays and slots. And it's almost like you get to pick your own lettuce. And then using a similar concept, we're just about to roll out a freestanding living lettuce display, that sort of pyramidal structure that you see on the left. And we hope to have those in many of the Whole Foods stores here by October um, of this year. Next, please. Now, finally, just to close um, opportunities that we see, we, we tend to be a producer because we, you know, we actually have, of course, um, fairly high production costs compared to people who might just put seeds in the, in the ground. We have to pay for all of our infrastructure and our utilities and oftentimes some special amendments to grow in the way that we do. So our costs are a little higher. So we, we need to actually market our products to companies like Whole Foods and their consumers who are willing to pay a little bit more. But we do, of course, sometimes produce what we call seconds, which are oftentimes a very high quality product that simply don't meet a certain set of standards that we're working with around however we have branded that product with the retailer. So these cases that I have below are actually um, what we have called seconds. There and, and the only reason that some of them aren't fully red yet is because we tend to do we tend to pick them just a little bit on the pre-ripe side so that you would be able to actually hold them for three or four days. Often our produce will go from vine to table in one to two days, as opposed to it could be seven to fourteen days for other um, other firms. And as I think many of you know, the nutritional quality in food dr drops dramatically um, in the period of, after it's been harvested. Some say that the nutritional uh, quality of a tomato can drop by 40% within four or five days. So this local aspect is not just kind of a, a nicety, it's actually a nutritional um, essential, we think. So anyway, these products, um, these what we call seconds, we think could be a perfect potential integration into the school systems where the school systems obviously can't pay as much as we would normally get from Whole Foods, but might be able to pay enough to cover the cost for us for things that we would otherwise not sell into those markets. So I think that's it. Let me see if there's any more slides. Um, oh, I should know that we do um, we do actually already host um, both public tours, and we're we're happy to also start involving more schools and students in our programs as well. Oftentimes, it's it's difficult. We can't necessarily take everybody tromping into the greenhouse because we have to be extremely careful about pathogens and bugs and that kind of thing. But we can certainly bring people to the greenhouse. We have a very beautiful kind of glass wall that people can see what's going on behind it and talk about what we're doing here. So that's it, I think, for, for us and a description of our, our process. Please stop in at one of your local stores, Whole Foods especially, and, and see if you can find our produce. And if you do, tell them that, you, uh, that you've, you've, you like it, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you, Brett. Um, I have to say that I think one of the most exciting things in the Circle Fresh Farms model is um, is what's so terribly necessary for Colorado. I mean, we have some cold months here. And so greenhouses are really a very important infrastructure in thinking about local food year round. And so, and greenhouses require very different types of growing and obviously it's an infrastructure component. And I love the idea that we've got people like Circle Fresh Farms that are really thinking about how to leverage and train and use a greenhouse model and get it out into the various different kinds of markets. So that's just really important. And the other thing that, that Brett mentioned that I think is um, exciting and one worth really thinking about, you know, the whole reason that we want to do this kind of um, local sourcing for our kids is because local foods are just fresher and fresher means that their nutritional content is likely to be much higher. So um, the more local and the faster it gets from the, the ground or the greenhouse to the table, the higher the nutritional value. So that's really important. Um, with that, I would like to just say what we always like to say at the end, 
which is as you go forward on your farm to school efforts, whatever they may be, we always like to say celebrate success no matter how small it is and keep striving for further excellence. And we have a few key resources that we would like to point you to. Basically, um, these are the ones that are uh, websites we mentioned earlier, as well as Live Well Colorado, which I want to um, thank very much for being the resource to put on this uh, set of webinars that we do with the Colorado Farm to School Project. And you'll also see the emails to all of the different um, presenters we had today. At this point, we will be doing a couple of things. And first and foremost is answering questions. We have one question in. And I'm going to hand it over to Becky to do the moderation of the questions. But please, people, start typing in questions because we're here to answer them if we can. Thank you. And just as a reminder, if you do have questions, you can ask your question by simply typing it into the question tab on your on-screen control panel. And we will go through the questions and read them out loud so we're all on the same page. And as we have questions coming in, I also want to remind everyone that this presentation and recording will be available on our website tomorrow, thewellcolorado.org. You can visit the toolbox and then go to webinars and select the presentation. And we will also be sending an email out to everybody that registered for today's webinar with links to the presentation and the recording. So to get started with questions, the first one says, I am in western Colorado in the Roaring Fork Valley. We are having a meeting in a few weeks to link our school districts in the region with ranchers willing to sell grass-fed beef to them. Are there any funds available to rural school districts to help them buy something whose price point is higher than the school district's budget? Well, this is Lynn, and I'm going to jump in by saying that I don't have the answer, but I know some people who might be able to help with this question. Um, I would point you to Krista Garand, who is the food service director in Durango School District, who has been doing a lot of local sourcing, including beef. And also Mike Calicrate, who does, um, who directs, or I guess he's the owner of Ranch Foods Direct, and he raises grass-fed um, uh, cattle, which he sells to the schools. And he probably can help you also figure out how do they and how does he meet that price point. We've had previous webinars that have talked a bit about that. And mostly what I remember from that is the discussion about how that uh, schools can take advantage of getting somewhat lower price points on produce by taking seconds, for example, which we heard um, Brett mention. But also, uh, ground beef tends to be much cheaper kind of cut, since it's not a true cut, it's the ground beef, um, than, say, the steaks. And that the, um, that the ranchers can work with the schools to try and find a price point that will work for them. But I really do encourage you to follow up with these other people, and we'll include them as resources in our follow-up email that Becky will send out after this. Now, our next question is from Sheila. And Sheila asks, how do we sign up for a visiting chef for September 15th? Uh, well, Colorado Cow School Meal Day is actually September 12th. So that's the official day, although I always uh, welcome if schools are, are doing different things at different times of the year. And you want a, a chef other than Colorado Cow School Meal Day, you're more than welcome to contact me, and I'm, I'm happy to, to help you with that. Uh, but if you do want a chef for Colorado Proud School Meal Day on September 12th, we do have an order form on our website at coloradoproud.org. Um, you can click on the Colorado Proud School Meal Day link and then open up the order form and fill that out and send it in or fax it in. Or you can simply drop me an email uh, on what you're looking for of the, the school and your contact information, and I will be happy to, um, to get that for you. Terrific. Thank you, Wendy. And we now have a question from Christina, and this is directed to Jason. Jason, you mentioned establishing a student advisory team for the Farm to School program. Do you have any suggestions on how to go about the process in our local communities? You know, one of the good ways of doing that is, I don't know if you have family and consumer sciences um, classes or teachers or pro start, um, get with some of those well 
organize classes, if it is ProStart, if it's DECA, if it's Family and Consumer Sciences, and utilize the students as your resource because what you'll find out is the students making decisions very, very powerful. Um, if they're helping you drive the program and they, I, I don't use the word buy-in because I don't, I don't necessarily enjoy that word, but if they're committed to the same goals that you are, then you have a really good program moving forward and everyone's committed to open listening and being honest and not getting feelings hurt, but growing towards something. So, you know, I would look around for the natural leaders in the high schools and find that class and find that teacher that is going to commit herself to it and her time and resources as well as her students. And then once you've tapped into that resource, you know, sit back and watch some really cool stuff go down. Terrific. Thank you, Jason. And we have a few more minutes, so if there are any last-minute questions, please feel free to type them in and send them our way. We'd be happy to answer them. Um, uh, this is Lynn again, and I want to go back to the um, first question from Eileen regarding the beef. I noticed that, um, that you're from Roaring Fork and that Jim Dyer has come out and worked with your um, area before. And he happens to be, of course, part of the Colorado Farm to School project, and he is also um, uh, on our webinar right now. So Jim, if you can hear us, we just unmuted you. If you'd like to speak to that, that would be terrific. If not, we can try to follow up with more information. Okay, I think we're having some trouble getting in touch with Jim, but we'll make sure to follow up. So we have just about a minute left. Please go ahead and ask your final question if there is one. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any more questions coming in, so I'd like to thank everybody for participating in today's webinar. Thank you to all of our presenters. It really was terrific. We greatly appreciate it. And if you do want to see a copy of this recording, again, please go to our website, and we will make sure to get it out to you. Thank you so much. Thank you.